Oh, praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. We praise you. We praise you. We worship you, Lord. We honor thy name. We glorify thy name. We exalt thy name, O Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, we praise you. 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 Worship you, O Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Riba Bara Shandara Ramamala, Rikandara Rabba Bara Shandara Ramamala, Kaya Mamala Mamala Mamala, Andala Lamamala Shandara Rabba Bara, Rikandara Rabba Bara. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the land. There is power, power, Wonder working power in the blood, in the precious blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Hallelujah. Father, name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. When we stand in the name of Jesus, tell me who can stand before in the mighty name of jesus we have the victory in the, Hallelujah. Name, of in the name of jesus we have the victory Hallelujah. father name of jesus by the name of jesus Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hello, my friends. Greetings to you all in the name of our dear Lord and Savior Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm so glad to have my dear friend, Prophet uh, uh, Milton Alvarez from the United States of America today in our Zoom meeting. Um, so, <clears throat> Today, the Lord is going to speak to India. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And, uh, so, I, friends, uh, I, I am asking you all to join in our meeting and uh, to hear the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Uh, yeah. And uh, one more. Uh, Yes. Hello. Hey, Hello. Hello. Master Jamasi. Welcome. Welcome to our Zoom meeting, Chandra. Sister Chandra. Hi. Yes. Hello. Hello. Hey. Hello. God bless you. Hi. Chandra, what are you doing? Are you God in bless India? You. I'm driving a car. Are you in India, Chandra? <laughs> I'm not in India. I wish I was in India. I would love to be in India. Where are you at? Yeah, we Where welcome you. you. We welcome you all to come and join with us in India, in our family, in our ministry. <laughs> I would love to come to India. I should come with um, with with uh, with Milton Alvarez, actually. You okay. got to come when life goes. <laughs> I gotta we'll bring get my, my husband wife and, and your you gotta wife. Bring Brian. Yes, and Josephine. And yes. Josephine, my whole family. I would love to go back with the native. I would love to go to India. That is on my it's one of my dreams. Yeah, that is awesome. Listen, Chandra, real quickly, I wanted to ask you, I was gonna call you tomorrow. Uh, uh, do you have any uh, horses at your place that uh, kids can ride? Uh, 
I do. I have a I have a problem right now. There's a disease called pigeon fever that one of my horses have. So I have been treating a horse several times a day. I'm actually getting ready to go outside to the barn to take care of the horse now. Okay, I yeah, okay. I got some kids coming from New York from our family, but I'll call you about that later. Yeah, call me about it, Milton. I could I could do it. We could figure something out. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. Uh, thanks, okay, Chandra. Ready? Uh, thanks, cool thanks, thanks, Chandra, for joining with us. And today we have a privilege for hearing the word of God from Prophet uh, Milton Alvarez. Uh, and the subject is uh, you know that I like this subject. I like anointing. But uh, when I asked him that uh, what subject you would like to speak uh, uh, to our nation, India, he spoke the double anointing. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so we, Hallelujah. Are, we are double blessed today. And, yes. Uh, and so without uh, wasting our time, uh, just I would like to introduce uh, our dear prophet to my audience and friends uh, from Facebook and YouTube and uh, Zoom. Uh, this is um, uh, Minister uh, uh, Prophet uh, 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 Milton Alvarez, which is a best friend of mine uh, since a few months uh, that I come Praise to. Him. Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, I come to know that he is a, a very powerful anointed man of God and traveled to different nations um, in, to, in this world for increasing saints and uh, equipping saints, the church leaders, and speaking to different people uh, in different nations. <laughs> so, uh, today we have a great privilege for him to have into our Zoom meeting. And... Uh, uh, I am so glad to uh, introduce also one of my friends, Chandra from United States of America. Uh, this sister is beautiful and anointed and loving sister and uh, who loves me very much and sometimes she supports us also. <laughs> uh, so so we, we are blessed. Hallelujah. Um, Hallelujah. But you know, uh, Kumar, uh, Chandra is a good friend of ours. So we were just with her a few weeks ago. Yes, so she's she absolutely well. So thank you. And how many people do you have on the Zoom there in India? Yeah, she has said that. And uh, uh, my friend, without uh, wasting any minute here, because you know that every minute is expensive here in this Zoom meeting. <laughs> so okay. uh, I would ask you to start with prayer. Yes. And, uh, let, 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 Ch let Chandra start prayer. Uh, Amen. Uh, and we go with the word of God. Yes, Sister Chandra. Thank you. Great. And how much time do we have, Cooper? Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Chandra. Yeah. All right. Dear Lord God, thank you, Father. Thank you for your goodness. I thank you, Lord God, that you will be over each person hearing our voices, hearing during this meeting. Ask Holy Spirit that you will come and touch every family, that you will come and touch every person in the sound of my voice. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak healing. I speak wholeness. I speak release of God's blessings over each person. I ask, Father God, that you will bless them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for your goodness and your graciousness. I thank you, Lord God, that you, not one need is gone unknown. You see the needs of your people, Lord God. I pray that you will bless the man of God as he preaches the word. And I pray, Father God, for every person listening. In Jesus' mighty name, we say amen. Amen. Hey, amen. I see amen. my good friend Addie there from California. Hey, Hello. Addie. Hey, Addie. I thought this was tomorrow night. <laughs> uh, I got lost on the, on the time zones. I, yeah. I called him last night. He said, no, it's tomorrow. I said, okay. We're getting <laughs> I closer. think it's on the calendar for tomorrow night. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Brother, Brother Milton. Uh, yes. You know, the prophecy that you have given to me from Deuteronomy 111 is repeated by Sister Addy to me. And she continually prophesied oh. for us from Deuteronomy 111. I was much, I was much pleased to have this uh, promise of God, uh, and love that, love that, and uh, uh, love to meet you all, dear people of God, 
Christian sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus. Oh, standing law from India. <laughs> Amen. Yes, now this is the time for us to hear the word of God. Before that, uh, would you like to speak for two, two minutes, uh, Sister Addy? Because we don't have much more time in the last time. Yeah, no, 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 no that's, that's fine. I would love to just hear Milton speak tonight. Um, total man of God, you are going to be totally blessed. I'm always blessed, so go for it. Okay. Praise God. God bless. Yes, this is your time, my friend, Prophet Alvarez. Amen. Uh, Kuma, how much time do we have? Oh, 40 minutes. Okay, let me know when we get down to the last four, uh, five minutes, okay? Okay, Father in Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you for the blessing. We thank you right now that we put the uh, blessing over India and uh, especially over Prime Minister Modi. Uh, we speak to all the Hollywood stars, uh, Bollywood, and uh, we awaken them and shake them by the blood of Jesus. Yeah. And we just uh, put a hold on those suicides that have been happening in Bollywood. Yeah. Been, uh, Bollywood, uh, quite a few have died. And uh, we just declared that they meet the Lord and we reverse yeah. the curse. Yes. And we declare that Bollywood belongs yes, to Lord. Lord. And that yeah. they're going to make a yes. huge impact over India and the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes, Amen. Lord. Amen. Okay, Amen. John, John, keep your eyes on the road if you're driving. <laughs> Amen. Well, listen, we're going to go open up uh, tonight. We're going to be speaking about the double anointing. And uh, what I was led in the spirit is that the double anointing is here because of you faithful people. And uh, what's happening is that I gave a word just recently that as people are hunkering in and they're, you know, in fear, uh, God's going to remove them. And he's going to put him in another place. He's not going to interfere with what God's doing with his church because the spirit of fear is not in, in us. You know, we have the spirit of power, love, and sound mind. Yeah. And, uh, and, and what God spoke to me just recently, very clearly, that the quarantine was going to quarantine a lot of people. And what's going to happen with the quarantine is going to be like Jesus coming like a thief in the night. He's going for his bride. And he's going to shut the door and the five foolish virgins are not going to get in. And uh, I gave that even to our church because we're having a lot of people that are making the governors of the state their gods. They're not banking on God. In California, Newsom, we got, uh, uh, you know, Governor uh, Brown in, in Oregon, who's a witch. Uh, we bring it down, the fire of Elijah and Jezebel. And then we have uh, Inslee in Washington, who's just so corrupt and so evil-minded that tonight he has a soul experience that the power of God just come on him, the soul experience, and that he will be shaken and broken uh, by the Spirit of God. So what I gave was, and, and if you read, and this is so powerful, and I really want this to get into your spirit, as God has been showing me, uh, the double anointing, it's just so powerful, because it's one of the two most powerful men in the Bible, and uh, here we have the, you know, the duplicity of uh, Elijah and Elijah, who followed Elijah everywhere, and, and Elijah said, if you see me, go up to heaven in a whirlwind, he says, you shall have the double anointing. Uh, and because when Elijah, Elijah asked Elijah, what do you want? He says, I want a double of what you got. And he said, you asked for a hard thing. Now, I didn't understand that why he said you asked a hard thing. I knew, you know, the complexity of it uh, because there's a lot, of, you know, when you ask for anointing, I have a lot of people ask for anointing so foolishly uh, and God's not going to feed the pearls to the swine. I got people right now that we know that have asked for great men of God, their mantles, and they're not doing anything. You're not going to get it. That's just the way it is. You know, if you don't do double of what's given to you, uh, forget it. You can duplicate what the man has done, the man of God, but you have to go over and beyond and above, which we're seeing down in this last day. The, the reason why this COVID has come is to stop the greatest uh, revival that this world has ever seen. We had a, a guy the other day in one of our full gospel meetings. He said, well, COVID has come because they don't want, you know, Trump to be president, which Trump is going to be a light to all the nations because of his love of Christ and his change. But that's not the real reason. 
uh, Trump is a byproduct of what God wants to do. And the byproduct is the greatest revival that we have ever seen. So uh, if we get back here to uh, what's happened in sports and we see that, um, uh, you know, uh, Jones many years ago, uh, you know, the prophet, and uh, he declared that when Kansas City would uh, win the Super Bowl at the 58 year, it was going to be the greatest revival the world has ever seen. And last year they won it, this year actually, and it was the 50th year. Uh, the anointing has come. Uh, the owners are powerful Christians, Lamont Hunt. Uh, every game they have, a home game, they have church there so that people don't miss church, the thousands that come to the football game so they can get the anointing that's here. And plus the quarterback, the head of the team, is a powerful Christian too. So we're already seeing that worldwide revival. If we can identify that, it's like through a cricket player, a football player, soccer, it doesn't matter. God wants to get your attention, and he uses the foolishness things of this earth to confound the wise. So he'll use something that people don't really understand or know about. And as you dig deeper, then God will show you the truth, you know. It's like he says in Jeremiah 33, 3, call out. Call out is superficial. Clamor is when you're not going to let go of the Lord until he gives you everything that you want to hear and that you're going to use for God's kingdom. So he says, call out, clamor out to me. And then he says a powerful word, and I will show you great and mighty things. He doesn't say little things, great and mighty things that you don't know. And in the Hebrew version, he says, the very mysteries of my heart will I show you. Well, how do you get the mysteries of, heart, of God's heart? You clamor. And people say, well, I don't understand mysteries. That's why they're a mystery. And the greatest mystery in our lives is that when we came from darkness to light, and we met Jesus Christ. I was in seven different religions, Buddhist, Hindu. I was a Hindu priest in Malaysia. I was into witchcraft, Juju, Catholicism. Uh, I was a Muslim in Saudi Arabia in the 80s, you know, practicing uh, the Quran and the Hadiths and uh, never knew Jesus. And then the greatest mystery of my life was when I went to commit suicide in uh, 1986, uh, Nikki Cruz, the great evangelist from Puerto Rico, spoke my whole life story at 84 channels, and that's a mystery. You see, nothing that we can do. And I always tell people God doesn't need TV, transponders, iPhones, iPads, who make a donkey speak, who make the rocks cry out, but He will get your attention. And praise God that for 34 years now we've been standing strong on the Lord, and I always ask God to not never let me waver to protect me. I give him free will to do whatever he has to do when the enemy comes in and I don't see him. Or that if I sin or whatever, you know, I give him free will to put me back on track. You see, and that's the free will that God gives us, you know. So here we see in, um, in chapter uh, 1 Kings 19, and I'm going to read it real quickly. I'm not going to go because we have a short time. Uh, 1 Kings 19.1. And the Word of God, we bless the Word of God by the power of the Holy Spirit that has filled every RNA cell, every DNA cell, every neuron, and uh, surpass everything that our human thinking can think of, and let the Holy Spirit just expound. Give us night visions tonight, because it's night here, according to Daniel 2.21, great night visions. So the Word of God says at verse 1, And Ahab had told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and withal he had slain all the prophets, with the sword. He was a mighty man in the spirit and the physical. He didn't play no games. You know, he was like Dirty Harry. He said, make my day, you know. And, uh, you know, and he did. You know, he slew them all. He didn't care. He did what God told him to do. Then Jezebel in verse 2 said, sent the messenger to Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me and more also if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And she's talking about the ones he slew. But here she says a powerful word that with our lips we're hooked up to the word of God. She said, uh, you know, so let the gods do to me and more also. And we know that she was destroyed and killed by the eunuchs, threw her off the balcony and the horse of Jehu stomped her, which is prophesied that the only things that would be left were her feet and uh, the palms of her hand. So by what she spoke, she was destroyed. 
and we're seeing that in the world now that what the world speaks they're going to get back you know we're seeing so much mayhem and anarchy here in america but guess what the enemy is going to destroy themselves through the mayhem and, and we're not to look at that because if we look at it we're going to be led by fear and fear is Satan. that satan is my god you see so we don't have no fear we keep our eyes on the lord knowing that uh, the best is yet to come. That no matter what Satan does, he, God's got something great that's coming out of this. So we see in, in verse 3 that he says, and when he saw that he arose and went for his life, right there the fear came in. And this is what we're seeing all over the world. You know, I was just ministering uh, a few months ago uh, before the COVID in Nepal, and uh, there's 2,000 people that already committed suicide. Uh, there's more people dying of suicide than COVID-19. Because the, the fear, you see, like Job uh, said in uh, Job 3.25, he said, what I feared most came upon me. So we've got to be very careful because we're humans, and I do get fear, but then I catch myself as a God, forgive me. You see, we ask for forgiveness for not standing in faith and unbelief, you know, that comes in. And we have to close that door because if the faith is still, the fear is still there, Satan's got an open door. So here we see that, you know, when he saw that he arose, uh, verse 3, for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left a serpent there. But he himself went a day's journey unto the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree, I'm sorry, and he requested for himself that he might die and said, it is enough now, O Lord, take away my life for I am no better than my father's. So right here, after all the great exploits he did, He's not standing on the word, uh, word of the Lord. You see, now he's fearful. He's saying, God, rapture me. I want to go to heaven. You know, I don't want to hang here anymore. This is too ugly. Just take me out of here. Many years ago, there was a famous movie that was called uh, It's a Mad, Mad World. Very famous uh, bestseller movie. And uh, in, in the meantime, while well, the guy has seen so much destruction, he says, uh, stop the world. Stop it. I want to get off, you know, step off the world. And this is what we're seeing with a lot of Christians. They want to go home. And what happens is that God's going to replace these people if they don't repent with the double anointing. This is what happened to Elijah. Elijah fell in fear, but God has somebody else. See, don't ever think that God can't replace us. We are replaceable. And here he says, uh, so powerful, he says he requested for himself that he might die and said, it is enough now, Lord, take away my life for I am no better than my father. So that's the spirit of suicide, death and destruction. Right there, he's opening up the doors of Satan and he's saying, Satan, take me out because God is not listening to me. And this is what Satan would do, but God overrode Satan because Satan could have taken him up, but God had a plan to pass the mantle on to Elijah. So here we see in verse five, and as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, and an angel touched him and said, arise and eat. Now here's the thing that we're saying, that when fear comes, we can't eat. We're so preoccupied with our fear that our hunger goes away. We become uh, lame, we become uh, desensitized. And there's many people that go into a mode of not eating and because of the fear. You see, if they eat something, they're going to throw it up. They're fearful. They're freaking out. And, uh, you know, so this is what's happening to Elijah, the powerful man of God, who slew all the ba uh, prophets of Baal, 400. And, uh, you know, mighty, mighty man of God. But this is, this, I say that God protect us all because this is, can happen to each and every one of us if we're not, uh, you know, fearing God. Uh, it's, uh, you know, the fear of God, like it says in Proverbs, is the beginning of all wisdom. So he says, uh, the angel comes, he knows that he's not going to eat. So if he doesn't eat, he's going to die right there. And we're seeing that all over the world, that there's people dying of COVID because of hunger, fear, suicide, because, you know, they just don't know how to react. But God was so merciful that he sent an angel to wake him up. First of all, he shook him Hallelujah. because he didn't know what to do. He shook Elijah and he says, here, I got some food for you. Amen. So, and as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, an angel touched him and said unto him, arise and eat. So he was so fearful that the angel had to remind him 
that the angels are around us like they are now. And I speak to the angelic forces, north, south, east, and the west. We speak to Michael, the archangel, and Gabriel uh, to bring us a word to surround us even right now. Surround Modi, surround the parliament, you know, uh, bring the word the man's not bringing. And, and the angels are there to minister for us. So in, in verse 6, he says, And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals, and a cruise of water at his head, and he did it and drink, and laid him down again. So he's still freaking out. See, he already ate, but he's still scared. He's still in fear. And God's saying, what, what do I have to do, this guy, to wake him up? So here he says, And the angel of the Lord came again the second time. He had to send him twice. I would have woken up the first time and said, Lord, well, maybe not, you know, we're human. And, uh, you know, but here the angel got to come back twice. I mean, the first time should have let him know that God's in control. And it's kind of embarrassing when the angel has to come back again after he ate because he didn't want to deal with the situation. Now his belly's full, but he's still full of fear. So, you know, the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him. You know why he touched him? Because he wasn't paying attention to what was going on. He was so in fear that he was completely out of the element. And he touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. Not by power, not by might, but by my Holy Spirit. We think that the journey is too great for us, but we forget who sent us. If God for you, who can be against you? Zechariah 4, 6, not by power, not by might, but by my Spirit. He's the one that puts it all together. So the angel of the Lord came again the second time in Testament and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meal 40 days and 40 nights into Horeb, the Mount of God. Now, this is so amazing because what happened to Jesus when he was on the mountain? You see, he went 40 days and 40 nights fasting. And the angels came to minister to him. See, he didn't need God to touch him or the angels to wake him up. He was under the power of the Holy Ghost. And he knew that he was fasting under the power of God. But yet here the angel had to remind him twice that, hey, God's in control. So here we see the gust of the gist of everything. And we see in verse 9 that he says, And he came thither into a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? See, now he has a listen to the angel twice. Now God's got to speak strongly to him because he's hiding in the cave. See, God sent him on his way. He replenished him, gave him food, gave him strength, but he's still hiding. And God is saying, what are you doing here? Come on, guy, let's get moving. We got a work to do. And this is what the God is speaking to the church today. The church is hiding in a cave. <laughs> and God is saying, what are you doing there? We got pastors that are friends of ours that have gone into quarantine and they're going to stay in quarantine. And I told them, I said, you are going to lose God's blessing. You're playing with fire because you're going to be put aside. God is merciful. You're going to go to heaven, but you're going to lose your gifts here on earth. Not the gifts, you're going to lose the talents. Five, three, and one, ten, five, and one. Because if you bury the talent, God's going to give it to the faithful like Boomer, like Addy, like Chandra. We we're on fire for God, and God can use anybody, yeah, you see? And as the uh, church is in uh, the state of fear, uh, which I tell people, see, the bad thing is not that you're in fear. The bad thing is that what kind of example are you to the church, being a pastor and hunkering down and not coming out? That you're not trusting God. How are people going to see that they need to trust the God if the very pastors of the church are hunkering in? And, and they, you know, it's really funny because they're so deviated that they think that they're hearing from God. And, you know, I have pastors telling me, well, we got to be wise. We're, 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 you're not wise, you're foolish. This is the greatest time to ministry. This is the time that people really need you. They don't need you locked up. Locked up, you ain't doing nothing. You got to get out in the street, shake people. We just ministered to a young man yesterday who really needed God. And I got a call today that his whole life had changed. He had never met anybody like us. And the God be the glory. So here we see in verse 9, and he came to into a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. It's like he didn't listen to the angel twice. Now God's got to really shake him. And he said unto him, what doest thou here, Elijah? 
And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown thine altars down, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even only I, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. He's under fear. What's he talking about? They slew the prophets. He's the prophet that slew all the prophets of Baal. So what, what is he talking about? And then he's so, you know, a little bit arrogant in my sense that I'm the only one left. And a lot of times we think we're the only, you know, we're the last Coca-Cola in the desert. No, God's got thousands, millions out there that are doing greater works and we don't even know about it. And in this case, God told them there's 7,000 that haven't knelt. Let me give you a number. Uh, just 7,000 that are like you that have not uh, knelt on the bomb. So here we see that he says, I am the only one left and they seek my life to take it away. He has a spirit of persecution, spirit of fear. He's feeling that everybody is hypochondriac. Everybody's against him. He can't walk out anywhere after he did these great things for God. So here he says, and I am the only one left. You got to be kidding me. I had a friend of mine, a, a big ministry in America. And the guy, it was, he was a friend. We used to follow his ministry, one of the biggest ministries in the world. And he made a statement that uh, if his TV station and his uh, radio went out, 95% evangelism in the world would stop. Foolish. Because God can use a donkey rocks. He can speak through anybody. And to say something like that is like Elijah saying, I am the only one left. And God said, no, 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 no. You better sit down. I got 7,000 that haven't bowed to bow. So he says, uh, and he says, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And be behold, the Lord passed by in a great and strong wind, rent the mountains, broken in pieces, the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. He was not in the earthquake was not in the earth, and after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a still, small voice. Now, you notice that the last thing that God uses in this trilogy is the fire, and we see in, uh, you know, in, uh, when Elijah brought the fire down in 2 Kings 1, he burned up the two armies of 50. How did he burn them up? When they mocked them. They said, if you are a man of God, come down from the mountain, the two armies. I'm not going to go through that. And he said, if I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven. So he identified with the fire and spoke with such faith that the two fifties were burnt up. And then the third fifty said, have mercy. But you see the power that he still carried because he spoke to God. He said, let the fire come down. And God brought the fire down and he burnt them up. But here God did not get even his attention with the fire. And after he says the earthquake, the wind, things, the physical things that we can uh, identify with. But then the thing that came that was most powerful of all, that this is what God uses a lot of times to get our attention is a still small voice. The little small voice that we don't know if it's God, but God's leading us. Don't go there. Turn here. Stop. Don't, don't get on that plane. Don't get on that boat. Get out of the car. There's still a small voice that we got to learn to listen to. So here, he, the, the still small voice spoke to him. And then he says in 13, that was so when Elijah heard it, he heard it. See, he heard that still small voice. And he knew that that was God. And he says he wrapped his face in the mantle. And this was the same mantle that he passed on to Elijah. This is the mantle that he split the Jordan with. This is the mantle that when he went up in a whirlwind, the double anointing, the, the anointing of God was right there. This was the creative meeting God, not face to face, but being God in your presence, that the mantle was full of the glory of God, which he was going to pass on to Elijah for the double blessing. So he says, and it was so when, Elijah heard it because he knew the voice of God that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, what does this thou hear, Elijah? So here he, he starts again, you know, saying, oh, I'm the only one and everything. But here, you know, God said, that's it. I don't need you anymore. I'm going to give you something, somebody else is going to follow me to a great way. So here we say in... Um, 
Look at verse 17. And it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Hazel shall Jehu slay, and he that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elijah. See, he already passed the mantle to Elijah. He says, you're not doing my work. He says, I'm going to pick Elijah. And then he says in 18, yet have I left. Uh, I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all of these which is not bowed down uh, beside him. So here we see that, you know, Elijah was giving uh, the mantle, and I'll go quickly because I think I got five minutes. I took a little long on that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but I uh, will run by, and we see that uh, we'll go to 2 Kings 2.11, and it came to pass as they went on and talked that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, which is the fire that uh, Elijah used to burn up the armies, to bring down the, the, the prophets of Baal with the sacrifice. The same fire was given to Elijah. And he says the double anointing here, the chariots of fire and horses of fire. And that's the double anointing of fire. And I speak it over each and every one of you. And part of them both asunder. And Elijah went up in a whirlwind to heaven. Isn't that powerful? But the fire stayed with Elijah. So when Elijah saw it, he cried. And he says, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the husband thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and read them in what? Two pieces. The double anointing, splitting them up. And he has the double anointing on him. And he took up the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and cut the waters. And when he sliced the waters, this was the double anointing that came on him. So uh, what I'm going to finish with, and I want you to see this. This is so powerful. You guys are going to get the double anointing that the church is leaving behind. They're going to be left in the cave, and you guys are going to pick up that mantle. The fire is going to come on you. The chariots of Israel, the chariots of fire. Now we'll run real quickly to 2 Kings 13, and I'll finish off with this. Now, Elijah was falling sick of his sickness, whereupon he died. And Joash, the king of Israel, watch this, came down for him, watch this prophetically, and wept his face and said, Oh, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen therein. Ain't that amazing? What was the worst? So he said the same thing that Elijah, uh, Elijah said to Elijah when he was taken up. And here the king is speaking that to Elijah. And then Elijah tells him to take the arrows and everything. But I want you to see the greatest blessing that people have missed. And, and this will blow you away. And you'll see in 2 Kings 13, 20, and Elijah died. Watch this. This is so powerful. Because the mantle that Elijah was supposed to carry, now Elijah's got the double. And even in his deathbed, as he dies, watch this. And he says, and Elijah died, and they buried him. And the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming of the year. And, as the, and it came to pass as they were burying a man, that behold, they spied a band of men, and they cast the man into the sepulcher of Elijah. This is where Elijah was buried. See, Elijah wasn't buried because he went up to heaven in, in the whirlwind. And here he says, they cast the man down into the sepulcher, which is the cave, the burying place of Elijah. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elijah, the double blessing, he revived and stood up on his feet. In Amen. Power, Amen. Even he was dead. That supernatural glory of uh, the double blessing that Elijah did not carry, he gave it to Elijah. And even in his deathbed, the glory of God brought that man up from the dead. So I speak that over each and every one of you. That right now, the spirit of God, the double blessing, the bones of Elijah carrying the glory that was supposed to be for Elijah, but he passed it on because he freaked out. He couldn't handle it. God protect us all that we don't have fear. We have a power of love, sound mind, no fear, and that we're going to go forth for the Lord. And the yeah. Lord, I ask you right now for each and every one listening to give them the double anointing, double blessing to do things they never thought they would do, to go to places they never yeah. thought they would go. And yes. that, that the talents are taken away from the church so sad that you give it to us. 
and uh, we feign like uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, Isaiah. Here am I, Lord. Send me. I'm ready to go. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I have to do. You send me. We're not going to stay in the cave. And Father, I just pray for all those in the cave. Uh, wake them up tonight. Wake them yeah. up like the yeah. angel. You know, touch them twice. We have mercy on them. If yes. they don't get up, Lord, just still small yeah. voice. If they can. Hallelujah. Are you there? Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. 